Hello and welcome to the latest episode of How to Draw Awesome Animals with your friends at Peppermint Narwhal. This is the video series where we teach you how to draw animals in a fun and simple way while we share facts about the species as we go along. So since we're in the midst of Coral Reef Awareness Week, and if you weren't aware of that, the third week in July, third full week in July is Coral Reef Awareness Week, we selected the blue parrotfish as the animal that we're going to be drawing today. Uh, is this, you can see here, we've listed its common name, and below that in the parentheses, we have its scientific name, and of course, its IUCN conservation status right now, at least at the time of the recording of this video, is great, it's least concern. So this stunning fish you would find swimming around coral reefs in the Atlantic Ocean uh, and, the, and the Caribbean area. So uh, that's uh, where this guy would find, but there are a number of pair of fish that you would find throughout the world. There's about 80 species of, or so. So we're gonna go ahead and get started and we'll go ahead and show you that I'm drawing here with my pencil and paper as the drawing medium of choice. So I'll go ahead and go ahead and get started here by putting a couple dots on the page. So we're gonna put a dot here and we'll put a dot here. Okay, and uh, if you're new to this video series, basically I'm teaching you a, a drawing method that's kind of like connect the dots. We've all done that before. Two dots is a straight line, just like you would in a normal connect the dots. So I put my two dots there and I'm just gonna connect that with a nice straight line. Looks pretty good. And now we're also gonna do a curve line. And a curve line, I'm gonna show you how to do that with three dots. And the reason I use three dots for that is again, uh, that second dot or the dot in the middle becomes kind of the round of the curve or the arch of the curve. So there we go, just gonna kind of make a nice curve line here using those three dots. Okay, that looks pretty good. So from this dot here, we're going to come down and we're just gonna draw another straight line. So we've got two dots there, just another straight line there. So we're drawing the sort of head of our parrotfish. Uh, and right now we're gonna go to the most uh, signature part of the parrotfish. We're gonna start the beak. So to do that, we're gonna use this dot here and we're gonna use this dot here or create this dot and then put a dot right there. So there's three dots again, and we're gonna make a nice curve there. And that's pretty good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, we're gonna do an S curve. If you've been on this video series before, you've seen it. Uh, if you haven't, you might just wanna watch me draw it. It's essentially like two curves, one going up and then coming back down. It's like a, that's why it's called like an S, uh, S shape. So it can go really in any direction. In this case, you just watch me do it here. I'm gonna go up from this line here down and then back up there you go almost looks like the you know a wave or a rolling hill or something like that okay so that's going to actually kind of be the, the the mouth here that we're starting so we're actually going to make a nice happy little face on this guy so i'll just put a nice dimple curve right here all right that looks good now for this uh top of the beak uh, i'm going to sort of make another type of s curve here and I'm just gonna kind of seam it together to close this top off. So you might just wanna watch me do it again, but I'm starting off a little high up here, that top, and then kind of coming down and then bringing it right into that sort of dimple smile center there. There we go, that looks good. Okay, so now we're gonna come back down here and we're gonna put uh, a dot here and a dot here. We're just gonna kind of draw a little bit of a straight line there. That looks good. And then from there, we're going to put a little dot out here and we're just going to kind of draw another little straight line there that looks nice and then right now we're just going to kind of draw a curve line it's a little tight in here but i'm just going to sort of connect this to the top there and that looks pretty good okay so now i'm going to mirror this shape over here just a little bit further out and draw it just like that that looks nice and then i'm going to put a dot here and a dot here and a dot here and I got three dots, so I'm making a nice curved line for the bottom part of the beak. And the reason uh, they've got this beak-like jaw, and that's how they get their name, parrotfish, uh, that's very resemblant of a parrot uh, bird. And uh, they sort of use their beak for some uh, pretty important uh, and hard work. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So I'll finish this beak off by just putting a dot here, a dot here, and then we'll kind of kind of come up to that center of the smile there that center of that smile scheme. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna put a little tongue in here, uh, just like we've done on past episodes, almost like a flying bird in the distance or an M. And then uh, I'll just kind of color around everything but the tongue, kind of darken the inner part of the mouth and then make the tongue stand out. That looks great. Okay, so now we're gonna come down to uh, 
bottom part of this and put the chin on here. So we'll just put a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here, and that's three dots, so that's a curved line. So we'll just go ahead and bring that down right from that, that beak there. That looks pretty good. So the beak is actually, um, you know, it's kind of all fused together. It has a sort of beak-like shape. It's actually uh, fluorapatite. It's made of a material called fluorapatite, the teeth here. Um, and these are, is one of the hardest uh, natural substances around. So uh, it's very hard and it's we need it to be very hard because they're gonna use it to uh, sort of, uh, essentially it looks like they're chomping on rocks or coral. And we'll talk about that a little more in a second. I'm gonna put his eye on here first. So to do that, we're gonna make like an oval right about here. That looks fine. And then I'm going to kind of color in most of this oval or most of this oval here, but I'm going to leave a little bit of the top this time, like a little crescent at the top and then I'm not going to color in. And then I'm going to sort of put another oval inside of here that I won't color in. And I'll just color in this portion here. There we go. And that looks pretty good. And now uh, their eye is actually sort of, you know, projects out a little bit. So I'll just sort of put a little bit of a, another curve, just about that, just like that around my eye there. So that looks pretty good. Now, uh, again, I was talking about this, this beak and one of the things that they use this beak for is that they're, they want to eat, eat algae. And to eat algae, they have to kind of scrape it off of rocks and hard corals. So they're essentially always look like they're munching on rocks and coral, but they're really after the algae. Now what they do is when they eat that hard stuff, they bring in the algae and they actually have, uh, a number of fish have something uh, called pharyngeal teeth. And these are essentially throat teeth. So they have teeth in their throat. So since they do the sort of biting with the beak, they go into the throat, kind of crunches down the rock and coral a little bit, and then their stomach kind of separates out the algae, and then the hard substances are essentially ejected from the body when they, uh, when they basically go poop, essentially. So uh, essentially, beach sands, if everyone loves a nice sandy beach, you have coral fish, uh, I'm sorry, you have parrotfish to thank for that because the parrotfish are essentially creating the beaches that you have uh, so much enjoyment from. All that particles of sand are essentially ground up rocks and corals that uh, were digested by parrotfish. Okay, so I'm going to put some gills on this guy. This is a fish, so fish have gills. Uh, basically, I put a curve right about there on the face of my parrotfish. And they have a nice big gill area here, nice gill slit as it's called. And that's where a fish is gonna use uh, that to pull in water and separate out oxygen. And essentially that's how it's breathing underwater. So it doesn't necessarily need to come up to the surface where air fish pull in the oxygen from the, directly from the water using their gills. Okay, so this looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and now we're going to, let's continue the rest of this shape of this fish just to sort of, uh, oops, got some dogs that got excited in the background here. Uh, okay, so we got uh, dot up there. We'll put a dot over here and a dot here. So this is gonna be a, an overall, almost like a straight line with a little bit of a curve to it. So we're essentially kind of coming down, oops, coming down here and just like that. I missed it a little bit the first time, but there we go. That's why I like the pen, so you can kind of always draw a little light first and then correct as you go. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And now we're gonna kind of go to the underside of this fish and we're gonna put a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here. And we'll just kind of make a nice rounded curve shape here. And then we've got a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here. And then we're gonna kind of Again, softer curve there. That looks nice. All right, so now that we're at the nearing the tail here, we'll go ahead and uh, use this dot here on the top, put a dot here and a dot here. We're just gonna kind of round that off with a nice curve. And then the same thing happening down here, we're gonna put a dot up here and a dot out here. I'll just kind of round that off. And then we're going to essentially kind of steam this together here. So. Um, to do that, we're going to put a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here, and then we're going to make like a little curve there, and then we're going to do another one here on the bottom, three dots curve, there we go, and then I'll just kind of connect those 
like that. And now we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll, since we're at this point, we're gonna put the tail, uh, uh, tail fin on here. So to do that, we're going to put a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here. And there we go. Nice curved line. We'll do one at the bottom here. because uh, it'll start to be a little easier to see the shape of everything. So again, three, per, three points curve. There we go. And now we're going to essentially kind of bring this back down. Um, to do this though, I'm going to uh, essentially kind of do a little bit of a zigzaggy line, working my way to about this point here. That's gonna be kind of the, the notch of the dorsal fin. So you can have some fun with this, uh, basically. Essentially, there'd be rays of, uh, you know, like a projection here that basically helps give the shape to this fin. And then each one of those sort of has a little bit of a separation to it. So we'll just kind of capture that by, so from this line here, I'm making this sort of gradual zigzaggy line to that center point. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the bottom. So kind of, you don't have to be uh, specific, just random, and there we go. And as I said, there's, uh, you know, actual rays here of, you know, little uh, cartilage-like projections here that would essentially help give it shape. So you can almost kind of just connect from this back of the tail, just sort of some lines there, just add some nice detail. So that looks pretty good. All right, our pair of fish is coming along. Um, we'll go ahead and put on another key fin. Uh, and this fin is actually pretty interesting to the pair of fish. I'm gonna make another sort of curved line like I did here for the gill, but it's a smaller version of it. So, and this is where we're gonna put the pectoral fin. So we've got uh, three dots there, that looks nice. And I'll just sort of connect those nicely there. And then uh, now we're going to sort of put a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here. And we'll start that pectoral fin. They have a nice sort of long pectoral fin. Although for some fish, they get excessively long. This is just, a, I guess, a modest size, decent size one. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now, uh, from this tip, it kind of cuts in here. So we're going to sort of make like a, a curve line here. Sort of showing that like pointy tip of that. There we go. And then we're going to, from this dot, end dot here, we'll put a dot here and a dot here and round that off. And then we're just going to sort of make a straight line and connect it back to that uh, uh, muscle group here that sort of uh, steers this. Now these fish, uh, I'm going to put those lines on, and as I'm doing it, I'll talk a little bit about the importance of this pectoral fin with this fish. All fish use their pectoral fins um, to some degree uh, and use it for uh, oftentimes steering where they're generating a lot of movement from the tail. But these guys actually almost do almost all of their swimming uh, from their pectoral fins. So they're actually gonna do a lot more work than they are with the tail. So uh, a lot of times they're kind of hovering around uh, rocks and uh, the coral. So basically uh, they do a lot of this sort of, uh, some people call it arm swimming, you know, or the, their pectoral fins do most of the work. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, we'll go ahead and now uh, put on another important fin. And this fin is the fin that we find at the top of the fish. And this would be called a dorsal fin. And basically it goes along the spine. It's a fairly long one here. So we're gonna start off by sort of right about here on the head. We'll just put a dot and then we'll make a dot right about here and just draw a nice straight line. That looks pretty good. And we're gonna essentially kind of run this down here to about, about here on the fish. So we've got another kind of, uh, now I'm gonna draw this as a straight line because it's easier right now. Um, but I'm gonna draw it kind of a little bit light, but essentially that's about, you know, the distance on top of this dorsal fin here. So I'm just gonna kind of make that a little light for now. And then for the bottom part of it, I'm just going to sort of take this bottom dot and uh, put a little bit of a three dot curve here. There we go, just kind of taper that off nicely. And then from this dot here, I'll put a dot here and a dot here, and I'll just kind of bring it back to the body. So there we go. Now, the reason I said I sort of did that light at first is again, we'll, we'll draw some of those uh, rays that you would have uh, sort of giving the, the fish, it's helping to form that dorsal fin. So I'll put those on here. And if you want to uh, be extra detailed, you can kind of add that little bit of a, a rounding. I, it was a little hard to do the zigzaggy shape, I think there for you starting off. So I kept it a little simple at first, but you can actually kind of go back in and add some little, you know, cusping to that, a little bit of 
individual rays of the fin there. So that looks pretty good. All right, so we got a nice uh, pair of fish coming together here. He has a couple other uh, uh, fin groups that we're gonna talk about here. Um, we're going to add a fin here. And this is uh, similar to this one, a little longer and a little smaller here. So we'll put a, we'll put, actually we'll put that dot right about here. And then we'll put that dot right about here and just do a nice straight line kind of coming off there. And then from the bottom part of this, we'll kind of put a, it looks like we got a dot here that's handy, so I'll use that dot. And I'll kind of just sort of take this one out here. And again, uh, this time if you want to try doing the this, this sort of bumpy sort of line here, I'm going to try that here just to show you. It's basically almost like drawing waves in the ocean here. I'm just going to kind of draw that and taper it up. And then I'll kind of connect those down with lines there. And as I get to the end here, I'm just gonna add a couple smaller ones that come back to the body there to kind of taper down a little bit there. So that, that looks good. All right, now we'll come back to uh, the final fin group to complete our paired fish. Uh, there's two fins here that'll help also kind of provide some uh, balance here. So we'll put a dot here and a dot here and a dot out here. I'll make a nice sort of curve line kind of coming down. Sometimes you don't, when you see a fish, let's say you're snorkeling, um, you might not always see all these fins because fish can kind of sort of tuck them into their body and tuck them in to, uh, you know, uh, either move more quickly or kind of disguise themselves. Sometimes they push these fins all out to show more dominance or assert themselves over another fish. So you don't always see them all, uh, but this is kind of what they would look like if they were fully extended. So we've got uh, this fin here. We'll complete it by putting a dot up here and a dot over here. And then we'll use this end dot and just kind of kind of curve this one back. And again, there's a number of series of rays to this. that will just add them in here with a little bit of a curved line to each of them. Now there's technically another one on the other side here. Uh, this one, there's only one, but here there's two. So we'll go ahead and capture that by sort of adding a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here. And then go out diagonal. Now this one, we're not seeing as much of it as the other one sort of obstructed slightly. So I'll put my dot here and a dot here and just kind of bring it back a little bit covered up. And again, I'll just sort of make some of those rays there. So there we go. We've got some nice uh, looking uh, parrotfish. Now parrotfish have some very big distinguishing scales. Uh, they, I'll go ahead and put some on those on here, but just doing these sort of, almost like we're mirroring that sort of muscle group that we did here on the pectoral fin, but I'll just kind of offset them. Remember fish kind of have almost like uh, chain mail or something like that offset sort of curves. So I'm just going to add a number of these as I'm doing it, I'll tell you another little bit about uh, the, the uh, fish. That's pretty interesting and some final facts and we'll close this out. But again, you could just kind of add these, uh, uh, little scales here as you go along. Uh, they're definitely more prominent at the, or visible at the top of the body because they tend to get a little darker colored, but they'd be all over the body from, you know, the head to, or from the gills back to the back of the tail here. So as I'm doing that, like I said, I'll tell you one last kind of really cool fact about these fish. Um, so when these are active mostly during the day and then they need to sort of rest at night, kind of like you or I, but the problem that a fish has when it rests at night is that a lot of predators come out at night like sharks and eels. So they're not the fastest swimmer in the world and they kind of need to hide. And some of them are actually, these are fairly big fish too. So uh, what they've actually developed is a very fascinating ability. They actually sort of at nighttime, as it's time for bed, they'll start to create uh, this sort of mucus bubble. They, so they basically kind of create a cocoon for themselves and then they envelop themselves in it and essentially that cocoon takes away any sense that they would give off. So that way if a shark or another predator was swimming around in the area, that they wouldn't be able to smell them because they'd be in this sort of big bubble essentially. And then at the time when it's ready for them to wake up, they just sort of you know, pop the bubble and, and swim out of it. So it's a pretty uh, fascinating and interesting adaptation to stay safe at night. Okay, so that's our parrotfish. Uh, this is, again, the blue parrotfish, really stunning, beautiful fish. You can find it in the Atlantic and Caribbean seas. There's a number of other parrotfish. Like we said, there's about 80 or so. Uh, so feel free to have some fun. Uh, try other parrotfish or, you know, share your drawing with us of this blue parrotfish and post it, again, using the hashtag Minty Sketch or have uh, an adult help you do that. Again, if, if you like this video, please give it a like. And again, also, if you want to see more videos like in this series, Subscribing to the channel will certainly help in that way, and we appreciate that as well.
So thank you again. We hope to see you back here on another future episode of How to Draw Awesome Animals with your friends at Peppermint Narwhal.